Web applications often check file contents to ensure that only valid files are uploaded to the server. This is a common security measure that many web applications use to prevent users from uploading malicious files to the server. During this video, we see how an attacker can modify the file content in order to bypass file content validation to upload WebShell to the web server and get remote code execution. For the purpose of this video, we use the Lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. This lab contains a vulnerable image upload function that checks the contents of the file to verify that it is a genuine image. To solve this lab, we need to bypass the file content check and upload the web shell to get access to a secret file located in the Carlos home directory. Alright, let's go ahead and get started by clicking on access the lab. To access and review the file upload function, first we need to log in into our account. So we go to the login page, then fill out the login form with the account credentials that we got from lab description and proceed to login. Once logged in into our account, we can see the file upload function. To review the image upload function and identify the relevant HTTP requests for uploading and also accessing an image, let's go ahead and upload a normal image. So we select an image from our local machine, then proceed to upload the selected image. The message that we get from application confirms that the file has been uploaded to the avatar's directory. Next, we click on back to my account, and now we can see the uploaded image in the avatar section. So we have successfully uploaded an image to the application. In order to find the HTTP requests related to uploading and accessing the image, we go to the burp HTTP history. This HTTP post request to slash my account slash avatar endpoint should be the request for uploading the image. If we take a closer look at the body of this request, we can see that it contains the data for uploading files. Next, we need to find the request for accessing the uploaded image. This HTTP GET request is for accessing the uploaded image. So we have identified the request that we were looking for. Now to test the file upload function and check if we can identify a vulnerability that might allow us to upload a web shell to the web server, we send both of these requests to burp repeater. In repeater, we have two requests. The first tab contains the HTTP post request for uploading a file. So let's rename it to upload. And the second tab contains the get request for downloading the file. So let's rename it to download. Next, we go to the upload tab. Our goal is to upload the web shell and get remote code execution on the web server. So let's see how the application reacts when we try to upload the file containing malicious code. For the first attempt, we won't make any changes to the file extension or the content type, and we only modify the contents of the file by replacing it with a simple PHP code. To quickly change the file content, we can use the inspector panel. So we go to request body parameters, and replace the avatar's parameter value with the PHP script. This simple PHP code contains the system function, which takes a shell command from a URL parameter called CMD. It will execute that command and return its output. So if we manage to upload this PHP file, then we can execute shell commands on the web server. All right, let's see what happens when we send the request. We get 403 HTTP response code. So the application rejected the upload request and prevented us from uploading the file to the server. By looking at the body of the response, we see the error message. File is not a valid image. Since in the HTTP request, we didn't change the file extension or content type, this error message suggests that the application is checking the file content in order to determine if it's a valid image. Although the application checks the file contents before uploading them to the server and it might seem like that the file upload is not vulnerable, it's important to check how the application validates the file contents. Because some web applications validate the file contents by only checking for specific file signatures, such as file header signatures, to determine if the file is a valid image or not. In these scenarios, we can modify a file contents to include a legitimate file header for an image file and then embedding the malicious code that we want to execute on the server. This way, we can trick the application into thinking that it's a normal image file 
while actually it contains the web shell code. All right, let's go back to the original request where we uploaded the normal GIF file. If we look at the file content, we notice the GIF file header, which is a set of bytes located at the beginning of the file. We change the file content by replacing everything after the GIF file header with the PHP script. And since we want to upload an executable on the server, we also change the file name to shell.php. So if the application only checks the file header to determine if the file is a normal image, then we should be able to trick it into thinking that this file is a valid image and upload the shell.php to the server. Now let's see what happens when we send the request. All right, as we see, we could bypass the file content validation and the shell.php file is uploaded to the avatar's directory on the server. To execute commands using the web shell that we just uploaded, we go to the download tab. We change the path for accessing the shell.php file. Then we add a URL parameter called cmd and set its value to the system command that we want the web shell to execute on the server. We set the value of the cmd to id in order to get the current user on the server. And finally, we send the request. The application returns the output of the id command, which confirms that the current user on the web server is Carlos. To solve this lab, we need to access the contents of a secret file located in Carlos home directory. So we modify the cmd value and use the ls command to get the list of the files in Carlos home directory. Once we confirm that the secret file exists in Carlos home directory, we can use the cat command to access its contents. Then we copy the secret file content from the application response and go back to the web browser. Finally, we click on submit solution and then paste the secret file content. As we see, we get the message that we solved the lab. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more contents. Thank you for taking the time and watching this video and I'll see you in the next videos.